Hey everybody, this is the Marine. I love to camp and hike, but I also love to eat. And there's just something about camping and hiking that makes dinner taste so much better than anything you can make at home. Cooking in the great outdoors can be fun and relaxing, especially after a long day hike and talking with friends, if you have the right gear. And that gear is camp cookware. Cookware are just a collection of pots and pans and lids, and they're designed to nest together. Some cook sets will include extras such as bowls, cups, mugs that will nest within the pot. I don't think there's a piece of gear that you can personalize more than your cook kit. Individual pieces allow you the freedom to build your kit exactly the way you want it, like no one else. In this video, we're gonna look at the different types and sizes of cook kits that would work well for you. Now the most important part of the cook kit is the pot. The pot is not only for cooking or boiling water, but it's also used for storing the components of your cook kit into one compact, organized, and efficient little compartment. There's four main things to consider when purchasing a pot. Material, weight, volume, and nonstick. The first thing we're gonna look at is the material. What the pot is made of because of the material will also determine the weight of the pot. Now there's three basic materials that the cooking pot's made out of. Stainless steel, hard anodized aluminum, and titanium. Now stainless steel is the most durable, but it's also the most heaviest of the three. Stainless steel is non-reactive, which basically means that the water or the food will not pick up that metallic flavor. And it's completely non-toxic. Now a hard anodized aluminum or aluminum coated with a nonstick surface is lighter than stainless steel. In some cases lighter than titanium. Usually cheaper, less durable, especially when they're made thinner, which would make it lighter. It is perfectly safe and healthy to use until the nonstick surface is compromised. Then unfortunately, you'll probably want to replace your pot. Pure aluminum is not recommended for health reasons. Now the last material we're gonna look at is titanium. Titanium can be as strong as steel or stronger, but at half the weight. It is also very safe to cook with, being non-reactive and non-toxic. And it's very durable, but it's very pricey. But if you're a committed hiker, then this type of cooking pot would be a good investment for you. To show you the difference of each of these materials, I'm gonna put each one on a scale. The pots will be about the same size and of course have the same volume. Now the first pot we're going to weigh is a stainless steel pot from Solo Stove. Now the weight of this pot is 178 grams, which is six and a quarter ounces. The next pot we're going to weigh is a Snow Peak 900. The weight is 104 grams, which is three and five eighth ounces. Now a big misconception about titanium is that it's lighter than aluminum. As a raw material, titanium weighs more than aluminum. Though it's much durable and stronger, which now leads us to our last material, which is aluminum. Now the aluminum pot that we're gonna be looking at is an Imusa 12 centimeter. The weight is 100 grams, which is four grams lighter than the titanium pot, which is three and a half ounces. Now if you're a gram weenie, you can get a beer can pot like the Foster pot that weighs 36 grams with the lid on, 30 grams with the lid off which is one and one eighth ounces. You have to be careful with these types of pots. They can be easily crushed. Now let's talk nonstick. Whether or not your cooking pot is nonstick will greatly affect how you cook and what you cook. In general, titanium and stainless steel are nonstick and so are suited for boiling water and cooking things like soup and pasta. Some cooking pots will come with lids, then convert into little frying pans. It is possible to fry with them, but you'll need a lot of oil. Also, titanium pots are usually very thin, resulting in fast cook times. And also a high likeliness of your food burning if you're not careful. Now the volume of the cooking pot can be very tricky. 
trying to find the right size for your personal preference. But the good news is there's so many different size pots. For example, some companies like Snow Peak has pots ranging from 1400, 900, or 700 milliliters. And for small pots, you can get 600 and 400 milliliter mugs. But I suggest don't go under 450 milliliters. But the bad news is, with all those sizes, which one do I get? To find the right size pot, you first have to determine how many people it's going to be used for. The average volume for each person is one pint, two cups, 16 ounces, or 500 milliliters. For an example, if you had three people, then a cooking pot that's 1400 milliliters, like the Snow Peak 1400, would work just fine. Then for two people, you'd want a pot around 900 milliliters. If it's just for one person, then a 600 or 500 milliliter pot or mug would work really well. Another thing to consider is what are you going to be storing inside the pot for packing? For instance, are you going to be storing your windscreen, cup, stove, fuel, lighter, or any other items you'd like to bring will determine the size, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Now I don't like to bring a supper plate or a bowl. I like to eat out of the pot, or if I have freeze dry, I just eat right out of the bag. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Now some pots and mugs don't come with lids, and you really would want a lid. And you can purchase these from companies like Four Dogs, Mini Bowl Design, Batch Stove, and other cottage industries. Now some of the companies that sell cookware or cook kits are Vargo, Titanium Bots, there's Tokes, there's Evernew, MSR, GSI Outdoors, Snow Peak, Primus, Optimus, Evernew, Keith, Batch Stove, and whew, oh, there's a lot of them, and these are just some of them. The size of the cooking pot is determined by you and the trip you'll be taking it on. For example, will you be taking it car camping or going on a winter trek where you're pulling a poke instead of wearing a pack? Then a 900 or 1400 milliliter or the Moore's camp pot which has a capacity of 1.8 liters is something you may want to consider. Now if you're a backpacker and your load capacity is at a lightweight, then the best all around pot is a 700 milliliters which is lightweight and you can store a lot of extras in it. Now if you're an ultralight hiker, then the 450 milliliter would be for you. Now let's look at some of the extras you may want to put in your cook kit. And one of them that you definitely need is some type of eating utensil. It may be some type of spoon, fork, or even chopstick. There are two types of eating utensils that are popular today. The first one is a spork. One of them is a hybrid between a spoon and a fork. And the other one is a fork on one end and a spoon on the other. Now I most likely will eat out of a dehydrated food bag, which is really tall. My favorite utensil is one of these long spoons. This way I can dig way down in the bag, I can stir it without my hand going inside of the bag. And this way I won't get any food particles on my hand when I'm reaching way down there and stirring. I really love these spoons. Now another extra I'd like to share with you, especially if you have a larger pot, is bringing a cup. Those of you that have a mug for your pot, you wouldn't have to worry about this. But those who would have a larger pot, you may want to consider bringing a cup. And this cup may buy Mini Bowl Design is called the Angry Troll, which is 8 ounces, and it has a fiberglass wick on it so you can pick it up if you have it on the stove and you have to worry about burning your fingers. And this one comes in 8 ounce Angry Troll, they have a 12 ounce, and I think they go up to 16 ounce. And also Batch Stove also makes these out of thin aluminum, and this is a 12 ounce cup. Now for those of you that are using mugs for your pots, there's something I'd like to share with you. It works really great, and it'll take your pots to the next level. And the first item is called hot lips, so you don't burn your lips on a very hot mug. They're made out of heat resistant silicone that just snap on the mug, and they're very lightweight. Now my favorite are these silicone lip guards. They're just basically a silicone ring that you stretch over the pot rim, which will give you a cool surface when you're drinking hot chocolate, coffee, or broth, and you won't burn your lips on the hot surface. Now some cups, and the cups I showed you earlier, will have those silicone lip guards on there. It is a great feature to have. There's other extras you may want to bring to personalize your cook kit. But the last one I'd like to mention is how you'll light your stove or a fire. There are matches, lighters, or even fire starters. But what I'd like to share with you that has been working great for me is one of these hand torch or torch lighters. They are very lightweight, very effective, even in the strongest wind. They're easy to use and you can adjust the flame. 
and some of them are refillable, which means you can have this great lighter for a very long time. Well, I hope this video has helped you decide which cook kit would work best for you. If you have any questions or comments, please write them down below. I'd love to hear from you. This is the Marine. Thank you for watching, and God bless.